the Fed is a cartel. The Federal Reserve is a more of a criminal organization, in my opinion. If you go back to the creation of the Federal Reserve in Jekyll Island, who were the main players? Hello, everyone. Todd Bubba Horwitz, founder and CEO of Bubba Trading. In an interview with Daniela Cambone, Horwitz dives deep into the critical issues facing the U.S. economy, from the manipulation of interest rates by the Federal Reserve to the looming crisis in overleveraged banks. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. So it's interesting because you, I know your argument is we are in a recession. But on the flip side, most would say all those big smart names were talking about a recession, but technically it didn't happen. Now the SAM rule, yes, is signaling yellow that we're like heading into a recession. But some would say all this recession talk is just nonsense and they're just trying to shake out the average investor so institutional players can get back into the higher flying names at cheaper prices. So it's just trying to understand what's the real story here. Well, you know, we, we built a whole rally based on potential rate cuts starting back to last October. So we got the big rally, we got the big rally, and of course we never got the cuts. So now if you get a rate cut, it's going to be more damaging because now a rate cut would not be positive. A rate cut would be negative because it would be panic, especially if they would have cut last week under an emergency. But we're really seeing is the true destruction of capitalism. Because when you don't allow businesses to go out of business because they don't perform well and you continue to bail them out, hence the banks going back to 08, this is a problem and this is a destruction of capitalism. And this is what we're, we're seeing globally is they want globalization. They basically want the middle class to become serfs again, like they became, like they were thousands of years ago. And they want to have the bourgeoisie up at the top to have all the money. And that's really what you're watching. You're watching a destruction of capitalism. And you're seeing that this is happening all the time. And, and at the end of the day, if we don't get back to a free market capitalism system, because interest rates should not be determined by the Federal Reserve. Interest rates should be set, decided by the free market because asset classes know how to price themselves. It's very simple. There's a buyer and there's a seller and they will find the correct rate. And certainly the rate, even at the low rates we are now, or high for many, if you're, if you're under 40, these are very high rates, okay? But if you're, if you're my age, these rates are still very, very inexpensive. And, and of course, if you look at some of the peer-to-peer -peer lenders, they're getting 15, 16%. And if you're looking at the credit cards, which are using usury rates, which are in the mid twenties, those rates that we have more people at the max on their credit card debt that can't make anything but the minimum payment, which means they're never gonna pay it off. So tell me we're not in a recession, make up all these lies about what, how the economy is doing, because in my opinion, and I think if you ask the average American, the economy is in horrific shape. Uh, well, the, yeah, the economy is in horrific shape, and yet we have the S&P soaring, right? So it's such a huge disconnect there. It's like, how did we, how did we get here? How do we fix it? Or more importantly, to, again, to your point about recession, why don't we just come out and say, yeah, we are in a recession. It's like, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to face it. Well, it's always been the case. I mean, that's been part of, since Alan Greenspan took over the Fed in 1980, that has been kind of the case. I mean, it's been the bubble builder. If you go back to 1988, an average home was 150,000. That same home today is 720,000. So you look at the expands in the, in the indexes from that day, you'll see that they're in, in, in proportion to, to those, if not a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, you're, you have to make more to, to be able to live less than you live then because everything is so much more expensive and they refuse to admit that inflation is higher. We're not at three and a half percent inflation. That is a joke. We are way north of 10%. Just look at crude oil or gasoline. You're paying, depending on where you live, but let's just say the average across the country, you're paying 65% more for gasoline than you were paying four years ago. Now, if you think about it, your big, biggest expense besides besides gas is food. And food is about 40 to 50 to 60% higher on an average throughout the country. So how are we going to survive when you can't make a living and you can't make enough to cover your bills? I, first of all, the Fed is a cartel. 
The Federal Reserve is a more of a criminal organization, in my opinion. If you go back to the creation of the Federal Reserve in Jekyll Island, who were the main players? Paul Warburg, the Rothschilds, J.P. Morgan, and the Rockefellers. So they didn't have the best interests. They are not. They have single-handedly destroyed the dollar by conning the government into instituting the Federal Reserve. You know, the Federal Reserve, obviously, if people don't know, is a private organization. It's a private corporation named the Federal Reserve because you relate it to the government. But they should nobody should have any say. But the Fed is so far off their mantra of what they're supposed to be doing. Their jo- their job their job is jobs and stability, not manipulating interest rates to help others and to create bubbles, in which they have done. Okay, that is more the bigger problem. And I'm with Ron Paul that if you can't if we can't end the Fed, which we should, then at least have an ability to give it a true audit, which we don't. So again, if you look at the agencies that we have in this country, the SEC, FINRA, the Fed, none of them have the best interest of the citizen. They all have the best interest, either the brokerage firms or of the government. And of course, we supply the government with money because we have to pay taxes, which again, destroys all the extra money that you had because of all the extra taxes we're paying because of the excise tax and taxes on goods that you buy, because with inflation so high, you're paying in the hidden tax of inflation. Another comment I wanted to, to bring up to you, um, our good friend Jim Cramer reminding people amidst the bloodbath, uh, Baba, that, hey, gold held up a lot better than crypto, obviously angering a lot of folks in the crypto community. Um, but yeah, gold, yes, of course it held up better than, I mean, were you, were you surprised by that comment or just thoughts on Gold's performance amidst all this. Well, I mean, to listen to Jim Cramer, you should go see a doctor because he's clueless about it. He just makes a lot of noise, doesn't really say much. But gold held up. But cryptos, listen, if you compare the moves in gold and crypto, they're pretty similar over the, over recent history. And I think they're both good products. Listen, I'm a big believer in gold, as you know, and in silver and in platinum. And I think that it, at some point here, we may need gold, silver, platinum and crypto as a currency because of the weakness of the the fiat currency system around the globe, because that is nothing more than a fraud Ponzi scheme anyways, because the currencies are really worth nothing and they're actually just loans. And and that's really the problem that the central banks around the globe have too much power to reduce or manipulate or, or crush these currencies. And you see them, it's a race to the bottom with these high numbers of inflation. So what's the, you know, just to wrap here, uh, Baba, what's the lesson to be learned after uh, that global, you know, meltdown sell-off? Um, can we expect another hit to get punched again? Well, I think that you're going to see, an, I, I, listen, I'm still saying, I've said this for over a year. So again, this isn't new, but I still think there's a 50 to 60% haircut coming to the markets. I don't think it'll be tomorrow. I don't think it'll be this year because again, elections are very tricky. But again, I think the banks are in trouble. I think we have a lot of problems that are out there. But I think the one thing you have to remember if you're an investor in the stock market, the stock market has gone up 8.5% year over year since the inception and 10% year over year since 1950. And every time you see that big sell up, that big panic, or as we used to call it on the trading floor, the big, the, the big puke, buy it. Because you buy good companies, they're going to rebound. And of course, I told all of my people on Monday that you should be looking for a spot to buy good solid companies because they're probably going to rebound, which is the same thing I saw in 1987 when we had that big meltdown. And I think that if, if this country is going to survive and we're going to see a system that's going to work, then the stock market is not going to, continue, not going to stop. It's eight and a half percent year over year gains. Now we may be down next year. We may be down the year after. But if you're using money that is not over leveraged that you're going to have to sell out, then you should be accumulating assets that are going to grow. Gold, equities, and, and continue to buy into weakness. And, and when it comes to preserving your wealth, I mean, just looking at how gold held up in the midst of all that, I mean, is there a better wealth preservation tool? Well, I mean, there are there are other tools. I mean, gold is a good is a good start. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's using derivatives to to hedge and use that against your portfolio, which I do use. Uh, there's ways to do things of using the products correctly without putting yourself in jeopardy and actually. Depend, knowing exactly what your overall exposure is to any market. But certain, certainly, I believe that everybody should have at least 5 to 10% of their total net worth in gold or in silver or in, yeah. in some sort of metal, because I think that they are, they're not going anywhere. 
And I do believe once again, that they could be needed as a currency at some point in the coming years. Just final thought, um, you know, cause it's been a while since I spoke uh, with you, you know, and we chat outside of uh, filming time uh, a lot, quite a bit. Uh, but I was curious to get your thoughts as we, as we inch closer to the election. I mean, are you, were you surprised by this Harris curveball or the way this narrative is, is shaping up here? Well, I think she's taking the Biden approach and hiding in the basement. I mean, it's been 22 days since she's talked to anybody, basically. She hasn't had any real press conference yet. Uh, I think that this is a, a, a total spoof and a joke of watching an election in, in, in this country, uh, you know, from, from who she picked for a VP. Let's, you know, make America burn again. I mean, you know, look what happened in Minneapolis. Is that somebody you want as your vice president of your country? Nor if you want, you know, somebody who lets fr criminals out early and, and as the borders are, has left the border wide open and is not only letting in illegals and dangerous people, but they freed 99 terrorists, known terrorists that they freed. So I, again, I think this is a ridiculous situation that we're watching here. And, and, and I think that Trump has the right idea uh, as to what we should do in, in, in protecting this country. And I think, listen, I think we should seal off the borders and I think we should pull out of anything we have with Ukraine and to get away from China. I mean, firstly, what we're up to me, I'd like to make the United States an island and not deal with anybody because we don't need anybody else. We have enough here to deal with ourselves. We don't need to use the rest of the world to be globalized. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoyed this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.